Anyone? No? Yeah. Second question. Yeah, terrible. Yeah, uh, <laughs> so people say. Uh, my sister didn't like it, of course. Uh, so, has any parents uh, called you on the mail or contact you about uh, their wonderful, horrific stuff you do? Thank you. <laughs> but do the parents contact you? When? Oh, no. It's so funny because I did Pingu's the thing and uh, nobody picked up on the fact that I was destroying children's viewing on YouTube. <laughs> they were in The Guardian, The London Metro, The Daily Mail, and they was like, this guy made this awesome film, it's Pingu <laughs> getting slaughtered and his dad dies, it's amazing. And, and um, yeah, they, I've, I've, I read one comment once, uh, some, some angry parent saying, you know, it was, it was inappropriate and stuff, and the, the reply comment to it on YouTube is just really funny, you know, it's like, uh, well, I advise your child not to watch Pingu's Reservoir Dogs or Pingu's Texas Chainsaw Massacre then. <laughs> and Postman, Postman Pat had to remove that, just in fear of legality, like I encountered with Pingu's The Thing. In case anyone didn't realize, uh, I made a film called Pingu's The Thing, which I remade, and you saw tonight called Clay Cat's The Thing, and uh, basically the, the owners of Pingu uh, got really upset and, and shut me down. It's still online. It is, but it's nothing to do with me, I promise. Lee is not, Lee is not supposed to show it, but it <laughs> lives its own life. Yes. Basically, Ping is the thing. When I made that, it got two, it got a million hits in two weeks, and I was like, you know, it kind of like striking gold for me, striking oil, and so I had to make a Pingu clone. So Clay Cat looks really similar to Pingu, and obviously, I'm I'm, I'm making it for the internet, and um, the cat is like the internet mascot. So I, I don't know. I was just you know entrepreneurial thinking. <laughs> yeah, in the back. Uh, do you plan to expand uh, this work with the clay cats more? Because uh, um, some of the parts that are kind of uh, a little bit violent, but when with the cats you got out of this one, it's very delightful and funny in, in its own right. So do you want to do more with that? Yeah, I, I, get, I get asked a lot. To, I get a lot of requests for clay cat episodes. <laughs> I have fun poking fun at, fun at films. I can, you know, I, I do love films and everything, but I, I just love making fun of them. And um, that's something I'll probably continue till the day I die. <laughs> and, and for the moment, Clay Cat is that vehicle. Anyone else? Ask me anything. Yeah. Are those true stories about hamsters? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Are oh, the hamster stories true? Good question. Um, elements of it from myself. Um, of a, of the darker parts of it is like stories of stories. Basically, when I went to high school in my first year, I got an hamster and a couple of like naughty boys that I ended up being friends with. Thought it was a good idea to get an hamster too. But um, I loved and cared for my hamster, but these naughty boys didn't. And uh, the stories that they told me were like, uh, you know, stuff that upset me. Um, stuff like the hamster getting stuck in sellotape, the hamster in a sock getting swung around. Uh, all that stuff's true. It's not nothing that I did. But um, on my part, the, the, the most, like, I don't know, the, the biggest mistake I made was I brought my hamster back from the pet shop, and after, after a week, after a few days, it had babies. And I was like, oh, wow, you know, just like that kid. And then um, I got advice straight away from the pet shop saying, do not touch them, do not touch them. I was like, okay, I won't touch them. But I was like, oh, these are amazing. You know? And the next thing you know, the hamster's eating them. I'm going, no, <laughs> Crazy. So anyone else? I think you. Yeah, Philip. I do use skeletons, the, uh, uh, the correct term is amateurs, uh, and those, uh, yeah, bottom of the internet, you have to make them yourself, you know, cut them down and everything, and yeah, otherwise, you know, you, it, it can't support the clay. Uh, what camera do I use? Well, a lot of the stuff that you saw tonight was made on a, a camera that cost me 200 pounds off of eBay, uh, and a, a Panasonic FZ 
150, I believe. Um, it's not even an SLR camera, it's just like a digital camera, kind of pretending to be an SLR camera. But uh, now I'm in my first year of trade, I've actually, you know, I'm making a living from stop motion. I've invested in a uh, Canon 5D Mark II because uh, it's, uh, it connects to the computer and uh, it's a lot less asshole, you know, it communicates with each other, it's really clever stuff now and, uh, yeah. The, the, the FZ, the FZ, the Panasonic FZ, I mean, it just produces HD just as good as, like, you know, a, a two grand camera. Yes. Uh, are you able to make your living out of claymation? Yeah. It's like I tell, tell people I make a living from claymation, they go, how? YouTube. <laughs> Any filmmakers here? Put your hands up. Um, if you can crack it, YouTube it. There's a career to be made out of it. Revenue, adverts, etc. Yo, yeah. Uh, how, how long does it take to make a 60 second episode? The done in 60 second stuff, uh, there's a lot of work going into them because there's a lot of characters and a lot of sets. Even though you just briefly see it just like that. Uh, that can take like a day just to do that, you know, a split second bit, but like a really funny joke worth doing. Um, they usually take about 20 days, those, from start to finish. And you do everything yourself also, correct? I, yeah, I do everything myself. Uh, don't have any, fr well, I have friends, but you know, I don't have friends that want to do favors. Um, I do have a sound guy that I get involved every now and again, a, a professional. He does a, yeah, he does a great job. Tim Atkins is called. Any more questions? Have you thought of doing a feature? Yeah, I'm actually in talks with a couple of companies actually. Uh, a lot of it I can't talk about, but the one I can is the one that uh, Curl List director, Sightseer's director Ben Wheatley, uh, pitched to me last year and we're talking about doing a film under the title of Excuse the Language. Mega evil motherfuckers, and it's uh, his idea. It's Ben's idea. He's just asked me if I, you know, do that to his idea, and it's a a, a prison story like a Ricky O, Legend of Ricky, uh, but in claymation. Uh, it's it's still happening in the sense that um, funding is slowly coming together. Anyone else? So we could maybe wrap it up. So let's thank Lee very much. Well, thank thank you all. Thank you all for having me and everything. Yeah.